This video is made possible by Christopher John LTD in Daytona Beach, Florida. They specialize in not only the purchase, but the maintenance of British vehicles, including MGs, Triumphs, Morgans, and more. If you have any interest in British vehicles, you have to check out Christopher John LTD in Daytona Beach. Right, what's up guys my name is Zach and today I am driving a 1968 Morgan 44 up front is a 1.6 liter inline 4 down below is a four-speed manual transmission now I am super excited to be driving this here Morgan because well <laughs> it's a Morgan I've never driven a Morgan before this is a really cool and interesting car and I'm excited to share it with you today this video was filmed in the beautiful sunshine state of Florida. If you would like to submit your vehicle no matter where you are in the country, please head on over to ZachPradle.com where there's a quick and easy submission form. And the next time I travel the country, I might be coming to you. But let's get back to that 1.6 liter inline four. Well, it's a single cam engine, but is derived from the Lotus slash Ford Cortina, which was a dual cam engine and very, very famous. Now, Morgan is a really small manufacturer. They've been around since 1910, and they've never really made their own engine. They've always outsourced that part of the build. And so, this is from the Ford Cortina, like I said. And funny enough, the modern Morgan actually still uses a two-liter Ford engine. So, kind of a unique thing there. Now, although Morgans were sold in the US, this particular one was not because emissions started becoming a thing in the late 60s and so you could no longer import these to the United States. Before 1968, you actually could, but this year you couldn't. So this is a British import, which is why I'm on the wrong side of the car. Now, like I said, paired to it is a four speed manual. The shifter feels really good really notchy exactly what i would want out of a manual shifter however the car isn't really built for me i'm kind of sandwiched in here so as good as the shifter feels and operates my leg is getting quite the workout last but not least of course the morgan is rear wheel drive and something that you probably know about the morgan but i find fascinating is the fact that it is partially made out of wood that's right part of the chassis is actually made out of wood and they're still like that to this day sort of that old style charm so how does it feel to drive the morgan well like i said the seating position for a big guy like me is not comfortable at all and it's mainly because i have big legs and the steering wheel is huge if i were to swap out the steering wheel for a smaller unit i think i'd have a lot better of a time but the engine is peppy, the 1.6 liter is very, very fun. And so, let's let it sing a little. <laughs> it's fun, it's a British Roadster, and I know it's rainy today, but it, come on, that's the perfect weather for this. So that's about the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges. Off to the left is my amperage, fuel, and oil. In the center, I get my tachometer, which I love and was really, really useful for driving it around. And off to the right, I get my speedometer and my coolant temperature. Like I said, the steering wheel is very, very massive. Of course, no airbag, no horn, nothing like that. And I personally would probably swap this out for a little bit of a thinner model so my legs would actually spit around it. Off to the right, I don't have any window cranks because I don't have any windows. The owner actually left the windows at home and they sort of snap in if you want to use them. However, on a car like this, you don't really use the windows. You just don't. Moving into the center, I have a bunch of unlabeled switches. The center switch, I know for a fact, is the turn signal. So you move it to left to go left, right to turn right. You'll also find your choke and other knobs here. And of course, the ignition switch in the center. Also off to the left of all those buttons is the wooden glove box, which I love the fact that they also incorporate wood inside the car to kind of remind you you're driving something special and different. Although it was more commonplace back in the 60s, it's definitely not commonplace now. And then moving under the dash, we have the manual shifter. It's kind of weird. You can't completely 
see it when you are shifting gears. However, I promise you it's there. The shifter, like I said, feels great. I think the shift knob looks great as well and just has an overall really cool British sort of 60s chic style to it. The handbrake is also found down there. And then moving on to the seats, I don't have any center console, meaning, unfortunately, the Morgan does in fact fail the big friggin' bottle test. Totally expected. But the seats themselves are actually really comfortable and I was a little nervous about them because I am a big guy. I wasn't sure I was gonna fit in here. However, the driver's seat compresses so much that I actually sit in here and the ride itself in terms of the seat, it's actually pretty comfortable. Now, I don't have any back seats. The 4-4 name, I thought meant that it would have back seats. What it actually means is four cylinders, four wheels, because Morgan also made a three-wheeler at the time, and they still do. So the 4-4 name comes from four cylinders, four wheels, not four seats. However, the new plus fours mean that they have back seats. So a little bit of interesting verbiage there. I don't even have a trunk, however. I just get a spare tire on the back. I do get this little parcel shelf behind the driver's seat and passenger seat, obviously, that you could put your groceries on, but that's about it. Let's move on to the exterior, and I love the way that this car looks. First, let's do the walk around. I love it. It's so retro in 60s and just iconic. When you think of an old car, odds are you think of this. And that, to me, is really, really cool. But there are a couple interesting things I want to talk about. First of all, I want to talk about the bonnet strap. So the hood, or bonnet, is held down by a leather strap with this nice wool material on the bottom so it doesn't scratch the hood. This is because the car actually flexes when you hit bumps and whatnot. And so the little holders holding down the hood have actually been known to pop off. Would your hood come flying open? No, but it's cool that they gave you a strap to keep it down. And it's just iconic. But also, I do want to talk about the hood vents. Now, the owner was telling me about this, that you paid back in the day when you went to Morgan, you paid per vent. So the more vents on the hood that you got, the more you paid. It was a certain amount of pounds per vent that you wanted on your hood. So he said that was a big reason why he bought this car, was he saw the hood and how many vents it had. This was a very, very high class Morgan back in the day. Last thing I want to talk about with the exterior is the front grille, because this front grille is actually pulled directly off of a 2020 Morgan. It bolts right on. That's how little they've changed in the last 60 years is that the grills are bolt for bolt exchangeable. I find that amazing. But with all that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a Morgan 4.4? Well, I think that this thing is really, really interesting. That's why I wanted to review it because this is the true essence of a British Roadster. It has a little engine. It's really, really light. This is somewhere in the 1600 pound range, which is incredibly light for an automobile. It's simple. It doesn't need anything else. And I was talking to the owners earlier. There's just something about British Roadsters. They they just have a personality about them. They're the only car I would want to go down to the pub with and have a pint. I feel like they have crazy fun stories. They laugh a little too loud. They shake your hand a little too hard. But that's the glory of them. That's the beauty of them. These cars feel and, well, look more like friends and less like automobiles. I feel like I could tell someone, yeah, my friend Morgan the other day was crazy. They tossed me around and threw me and I got a little wet, but that's okay. That's what I love about these cars and that's the charm. And that's what I love about the company of Morgan is because they're still doing that. They're still offering to this day. Take a look at this 2020 Morgan Plus 4. It looks identical. Yes, it has a modern engine, but besides that, it still doesn't have traction control. It still doesn't have an airbag. That to me is so special. It's raw, it's unfiltered. There's nothing in here that's meant to comfort me or coddle me. It's meant to be driven in the sun and to have a good time. And I really, really love that. Huge thank you to Christopher John LTD here in Daytona Beach, Florida. They specialize in British vehicles. A lot of Morgans, MGs, Triumphs. You name the British Roadster, they work on it. They are the premier shop here in Florida. They are the guys to go to. They've been so helpful, so knowledgeable about these cars. And I was so thankful that I was able to film one of their vehicles. They're absolutely awesome. If you have any British motoring questions, or if you have a vehicle of your own that you need serviced, you need parts, if you need period correct oil, anything you need, please reach out to Christopher John LTD down here in Daytona Beach, Florida. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, 
and subscribe if you really liked it. I'm going to enjoy this car just a little bit more. <laughs> Take care, guys.